Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going through every single round of the first 10 rounds, and I'm going to point out probably my three, two, three, four, ten favorite players from each round. Now, these are the guys I'm, I'm targeting throughout the first 10 rounds of your fantasy football draft. You know, I don't typically like to just like narrow in on specific players. I like to kind of shuffle through if I'm doing a bunch of leagues, if I'm in three leagues or four leagues or five leagues, I'll typically diversify the revenue. If I'm at like the eight spot, maybe in one draft, I'm taking this guy and then another draft, I'm taking this guy. So we're going to kind of recycle through some of my favorite players up to this point in the summer in fantasy football drafts up to round 10. And then I'll just throw out some random like sleepers past that. Cause once you get to like ADP of uh, 120, 125 plus it's all hell breaks loose. It's every man for themselves. It's the goddamn fantasy football purge out here. So y'all know what to do next. Tuck it, flex it, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. <laughs> Round one seems kind of stupid because you just love every player in this round. We love Justin Jefferson. We love Jamar Chase. C-Max, the RB1, though I don't love him at his ADP. Uh, love Tyree Kill. So I would say outside of like the first three picks, the obvious picks, I think Tyree Kill, Stefan Diggs, and Nick Chubb are probably my favorite players on this list where they're going. Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell, and Tua I think are just going to make magic in Miami. Their pass rate's really high. If Tua can stay on the field, those two are going to get 60% of the targets in this offense. Stefan Diggs, I think, is the fact that he's going a tier below everybody else gets me kind of excited because he's just as talented as any receiver in the league, and he is still the number one target for Josh Allen. Josh Allen dealt with, like, the elbow tendonitis or whatever he was dealing with last year, and I think that made Diggs' numbers fall off. But Diggs was on fire to start the year. I would have put money that he was going to finish as the overall wide receiver one last year had, he, had Josh Allen not gotten hurt. And then Nick Chubb is just probably, you know, one of the central parts of what's going to be the most improved offense in the league. Deshaun Watson is going to be much better. This offensive line is really good. Kareem Hunt is not there. So I expect Nick Chubb's passing usage to go up just a little bit. Jerome Ford actually just left practice yesterday with what seems to be a semi-serious hamstring injury. But again, it's just Nick Chubb is going to eat as much as that man can possibly fit into his stomach this year. So even in the first round, Nick Chubb feels like a fantastic value pick. We move into round two, and all of this ADP is from Underdog Fantasy. And the drafts that Underdog does, you start one QB, two running backs, three wide receivers, and a tight end, and a flex. So you'll see wide receivers go a little bit earlier than you might see in your home leagues because you start one more. So the second round for me, it feels like the value is at running back. Like Saquon, Tony Pollard, Derrick Henry, Jonathan Taylor, getting them in the middle to the end of the second round is so I'm not taking dudes like Alave or Devontae Smith over like as much as I love those dudes and they're talented and they're going to be top 10 wide receivers in the next couple of years. Like I'm not taking them over Derrick Henry. Like those are the type of guys who are league winners. So we love Saquon. We love the workhorse running backs in the second round. I love Jalen Waddle there. For me, he's in that same tier of Amon Ra, Garrett Wilson, Devontae Adams, although you get to get him at a lower price. So it's like Jalen Waddle based on his value and where you're getting him, and then the workhorse running backs in this round. In round three, y'all know I've been a huge proponent of getting your elite quarterback. So a lot of times you'll see Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen fall to round three. Now, Lamar Jackson is not in that tier for me, and you see him going a little bit lower than that, and he is down there for me. Like, I'm not taking him in that same tier. If I have the 3-1, 3-2, 3-3, three, 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 I'm probably not even taking him in the third round at all. Probably going to let him fall into the fourth round, and if I can get him there, cool. If not, I'm fine with, like, Fields or Burrow in the fourth, fifth round. So round three, my favorite picks are the quarterbacks. I really like Calvin Ridley. I really like Amari Cooper. I don't love the running backs here. We don't know what's going on with Josh Jacobs' contract situation. Ramondre, y'all know I've been all in on him. I will say I've got some inside info that very, very possible that Zeke ends up in New England there. If that's the case, I still think Ramondre will be very, very good for the Patriots, but what's going to happen on the goal line is Zeke probably gets a lot of that work. Uh, Ramondre is not great on the goal line. Zeke is obviously phenomenal on the goal line. It's, it's almost like the only thing that he does well at this point, and that's going to cap a lot of Ramondre's upside. Unfortunately, I still think he can catch a ton of balls. I think he'd be good, but I'm not really looking to draft a guy who won't be the goal line back um, in, in the beginning of the third round. So as much as I love Ramondre, I'm cooling the Jets a little bit, and I'm not taking them there just based on the fact that there's a, there's a decent chance that Zeke lands in New England now. So in this round, I'm, I'm probably looking at quarterback, and if not quarterback, I'm probably looking at my wide receiver too. We get into round four, and this is another round where the wide receivers are obviously you know kind of overtaking everybody in this round. And, and for good reason, like I don't love Najee Harris. I like Etienne as a player, but Tank Bigsby 
gives me a ton of hesitation there. I don't know who's going to be the goal line back. Joe Mixon, I do like. I do think he's a really good value in the middle of the fourth round. As it pertains to wide receivers, like I like Watson and London a lot. They're really talented. They're really young. They have a lot of upside. I'm just a little weary about their situation. I like both of those guys, though. I like the entire bottom half of this of this round outside of DeAndre Hopkins. So my favorite picks are these wide receiver two threes. Drake London, Christian Watson, Terry McLaurin, Mike Williams, DJ Moore. I like all those guys. I like them a lot more than I like the running backs in the fourth round in particular. When I'm looking at the fourth, fifth round, that's where I'm hammering flex plays. So like, I like the wide receivers in that round, and I love the running backs in this round, along with Justin Fields. A lot of times I'm taking Justin Fields in the fourth round. If you don't go with a quarterback early, if you don't go with a quarterback in the fifth round, I absolutely fucking love Justin Fields at the 4-5 turn. Love Brandon Ayuk, but I love the running back value here. Give me Aaron Jones. Give me Alexander Madison. Give me Kenneth Walker if he's healthy over all the wide receivers underneath them. Deontay Johnson, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Chris Godwin, Marquise Brown. So fifth round, I'm looking to grab that second running back. If you want to go tight end and then wait till the sixth round to grab your running back, I'm cool with that as well. But my favorite players of this list are Brandon Ayuk if you need a wide receiver, but Justin Fields for sure, Aaron Jones, Alexander Madison, Kenneth Walker. Round six is like such a, a sexy round. I, there's no one on like the top half of this list that I do not like. Kittle, Lockett, Sanders, Akers, Damian Pierce, J.K. Dobbins, Mike Evans. Like hopefully I have my quarterback by this point so I don't have to use a six round pick on Trevor Lawrence, who, you know, obviously super talented, but like Michael Pittman even. I don't love Jordan Addison, Kyle Pitts, Gabe Davis there. I just don't think they're in the same tier as the other guys above them, the Pittmans, the Evans, the the Tyler Lockett's, and Miles Sanders and Cam Akers, Damian Pierce, Jacob Dobbins all have the chance to be like workhorse running backs in their respective offense. So my favorite picks here are the four running backs as well as Lockett, Evans, and Pittman's the last wide receiver in that tier for me. Sorry, this was just, this was not a, a great round to select the best guys that I like because I kind of like everybody here. Round seven and later is where you need to get a lot more targeted with the guys you like because the tiers start to kind of like drop off like I don't love Waller I don't love Pickens I really like Dotson I really like Dallas Goddard I really like David Montgomery I like Quentin Johnson a lot too but not in this tier right now Connor scares me being in the Arizona offense that I think is going to put up like 14 points a game Javonta Williams I don't still dude like I I still do not trust the camp reports of him being like full go and ready to go for the season he's still a fade for me Rashad White I worry about the offense, I worry about his third down role. I think they already said Chase Edmonds is going to start the year as a third down back. Like, that scares me away. Zay Flowers, I really like. And I really like Deshaun Watson here as well, if you didn't grab a quarterback yet. So my favorite picks in this round are Dotson, Dallas Goddard, David Montgomery, and then going down to the bottom, Zay Flowers and Deshaun Watson. Round eight, I also like uh, a lot of the top half players. Cooks, Burks, and Elijah Moore, I would gladly take as my wide receiver four slash flex play. I think Cooks is going to be a really, really big part of this Dallas offense. It's going to be pretty high flying and pass the ball a lot. I think Traylon Burks is just as likely to have a good year as DeAndre Hopkins there in Tennessee, to be honest with you. He's younger. He's in his prime. He's explosive. He's looked great all training camp. So that second year breakout, I think, is a real possibility for Burks and more. We've already seen the breakout happen. We just need a little more consistency and him being in a good environment. He now gets that in Cleveland. And then we have Alvin Kamara, who is serving the three-game suspension. But I think as soon as he's back, he's probably into that workhorse role. Back with Derek Carr, who will throw the ball to his running backs a lot more than Kamara's previous quarterbacks have. Don't love James Cook. Don't love Pacheco in any sort of PPR leagues. I do like Tua. I like Sky Moore a lot. But even as much as I like Sky Moore, like Cooks, Burks, and Moore and Elijah Moore are like so far ahead in a tier in terms of like how comfortable I feel with them being in my lineup right away than I do like Sky Moore despite him going like four picks later. I want nothing to do with Kadarius Tony right now, nothing to do with Dalvin Cook right now, nothing to do with Rashad Bateman right now, or Cortland Sutton. So those first four guys at the top of this round, Cooks, Burks, Elijah Moore, Alvin Kamara, and then two I also like a lot. Round nine, there is very few players I like on this list. Uh, Evan Ingram, I found myself taking a lot of him if I whiff on tight end. The, the, the thing is like, when I normally would take a tight end, whether it's Hawkinson in the fifth, Kittle in the sixth, Goddard in the seventh, a lot of times I end up whiffing because the flex plays available there are so juicy. Like I'll take Damian Pierce as my RB2 or a flex play over Kittle at my tight end, or I will take, you know, Brandon Ayuk or Terry McLaurin or something over Hawkinson in the fifth round, you know, and, and that ends up happening. So I'm sitting here in the ninth round and Evan Ingram is available. So I find myself taking a ton of Evan Ingram. Outside of him, there's no one really that I love on this list in the ninth round. Ingram's been my target for so many of these drafts. I kind of like Zach Charbonnet too with Kenneth Walker out and Zach Charbonnet taking a lot of first team reps here. I, I feel like the role will only increase the more time he has as the first team guy in the preseason. So Charbonnet is another guy like slowly creeping up my list as well. 
And in regards to my list, if you just want my rankings, we have them up in the draft guide right now, which is for sale on BDG.shop at full price. But if you want the discounted price, the cheapest way to get it and the easiest way to get it is by going to Underdog Fantasy. Again, all these ADPs are from Underdog. You can come draft with us. We're drafting in the Discord like literally every day with you guys. If you go to Underdog Fantasy, you download the app. It'll be linked right in the notes, the description of this video. And you deposit $10 or more using promo code BDGE. BDGE, first-time depositors, they're going to double whatever you put on the platform so you can do double the amount of drafts you were originally going to do, and you'll get the draft guide emailed to you for free within 30 minutes, 60 minutes of depositing on the platform, as well as updates throughout the entire preseason. I'm going to be doing a big weekly article in the draft guide updated after every week of the preseason with the biggest takeaways from that preseason weekend. So that will be a new update that comes out to you every single week following the preseason game. So get the draft guide, underdog fantasy, promo code BDGE, $10 or more will get you the draft guide for free, or you can head to BDGE.shop if you're already on the underdoge platform. So we move on to round 10 and a couple names immediately jump off the page here. Brian Robinson and Samaj P. Ryan are probably my favorite picks in this round. The wide receivers absolutely disgust me. They are disgusting to me. I like the running backs and I like the quarterbacks. I like this tier of QBs. You're getting like ultra value for Cousins, Jones, and Smith. I would be really comfortable with any of those guys as my starting quarterback. I also like Khalil Herbert down there at running back 39. So B-Rob, Samaja P. Ryan, Khalil Herbert. Nico Collins is my favorite wide receiver available on this list here, though I don't love him relative to the running backs available. But I like the quarterbacks as well. So if you faded quarterbacks, this is probably like the last tier I'm kind of comfortable with having as my starting QB. And then... After round 10, so like ADP 120 or later, I have an entire page in the draft guide kind of dedicated to our favorite late round targets. I'll list a few of them for y'all. At quarterback, I like Jared Goff after this tier. I like uh, Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, Sam Howell. Wide receiver, I like some dudes like Zay Jones, Michael Gallup, Alec Pierce, Michael Wilson. At running back, Jamal Williams, Jarek McKinnon, Kendra Miller, Tank Bigsby, along with some others. Tight end, there's a ton of guys going after pick 120. Don Kincaid, Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett. Laporta, Hayden Hurst, Trey McBride, Isaiah Likely. That has like a list of 15 guys on there that I am comfortable with drafting after round 10, after pick 120. Those are my favorite picks round by round through the first 10 rounds of your fantasy drafts, as well as some of my favorite targets at the end of fantasy drafts. On Friday, we'll be doing the same video going round by round, but my least favorite picks in each round. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you want the draft guide, go to Underdog underdogfantasy.com or hit the link down below it'll take you right to the app store deposit ten dollars or more with this code right here bdge and they'll double whatever you put down onto your account we're doing tons of pick'em games throughout the season so you want to get on there anyways and along with that they'll send you the draft guide i'm out of here i love you see you tomorrow